All right, so we're going to be getting into picks and bans. So as we were talking about earlier, we're expecting bans coming out of one of the ACK maps and most likely Esoteria. Yeah, Esoteria is not making it. <laughs> 100%. Sugary is the ban we're saying coming out. Camellia gets into the map, well, into the chat, and immediately his map gets banned straight away. <laughs> oh, no. And yeah, UK's banning Esoteria. Not a, not a surprise there. I'm really surprised Australia banned Sugary instead of an ACK map, though. Yeah, it's... Well, I think it's that same thing that I was saying earlier, though, where it's basically just... The Brits have better ACK in general. So I think what the Aussies are probably going for is cutting down the maps that they can't ACK as well. Yeah, um, I could see that. Because then that way, at least, they can have a chance if they do somehow manage to get better ACK on one of the maps, because somebody misses or something like that or like tiger pulls up osu for some reason <laughs> as he is very well known to do across many tournaments <laughs> yes a classic tiger move but yeah as you mentioned one person missing during an act map is the difference between a win or a loss so taking that chance if you think you're going to lose a match you could take the chance on two act maps and then even if you think your players are better than you act maps you could take that chance at one of them missing, and you have that win. So I think that's something I've been seeing a lot with recent tournaments, um, which is that a lot of players go for that safe option of, can I combo this map? Yes. Okay. I'm going to try and bank on the other player missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in a fair amount of tournaments, it's actually working out, especially in these early rounds when there's a larger skill gap between players. It's definitely been working out in an, a, quite a few cases but at the same time it's like we saw yesterday with the US versus Poland where they tried that as well it just depending on the skill gap sometimes it just does not work yeah <laughs> I mean there's only so much gap to fill when you're playing versus the US so um yeah well they banked on that exact same strategy and the US players came out with 97s yeah um, so and all of I believe what like most of the people playing then aren't people that fully practice ACK. Uh, they're just good players. So we could easily see a similar situation when it comes to actual ACK maps here. Yeah, and it looks like Goat's gonna be our first pick, actually. So Aww. I think that maybe is... just looking for a good mid range kind of way in, I guess. I don't know. I didn't see, was it the UK's pick or the Australia's pick? Um, the... That is our pick? Okay, we picked GOAT. <laughs> we right. picked GOAT. Okay, that's not what I expected, but I'm not going to question it. Yeah, I mean, if they feel confident with going with that, maybe they think that the chance of Australia having some misses here and there might help them out with the overall act. I mean... There's lots of patterns, like especially towards the end of Goat, that end up really kind of catching you off guard with the angles. So, yeah, they might be banking on that as well. I know there's, um, they're probably fairly come, well, they're probably fairly come through with a lot of techie and erky stuff because uh, one advantage that we have over the other countries, at the very least, uh, is a certain person called Yoshi. <laughs> oh. Yes. Uh, the well and famous Yoshi coaching, uh, which the Brits have had for free since the World Cup was announced, um, or at least the teams were starting to get picked. Um, so I, I feel like there's at least going to be people that have definitely practiced ACK, <laughs> well, ACK on tech maps specifically. And I know Tiger's probably, probably very comfy with more techy stuff as well. I personally so, would like to know Yoshi's personal coaching style. Does he force all of the players to play Solus 2 all day long? Uh, no, but I also wish he did. <laughs> it would be, you know, the most strenuous of training, I would say. I mean, I do that anyway, so I don't think it's... <laughs> I, I do that anyway, and out of... Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, I think I'm one of the lower-ranked uh, active Brits, so... You know, that's that's not worked out very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. You never know. Some people get different things from training and coaching, so. Yeah, I just got a bad map taste and QAT instead. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it went the wrong way. So, 
the the chat at the moment is actually this is different compared to what we used to. Uh, we have actual flags. Um, <laughs> that's it. It's just flags. Well, you uh, know, we gotta show our pride for the countries we're rooting for. It actually looks like Australia is getting the the majority of the support from chat. Yeah, well, I think we have been shit talking for the majority of the um, <laughs> <laughs> lead up right. to the World Cup. <laughs> uh, looking specifically at the UK Beat Saber Twitter account as well. Um, well it looks like we'll be having a little technical break. Oh, PC's crashing. Always very cool. Good timing. Thank you, PC. <laughs> I think that's what we always want to see. It's just, you know what, the PC's refreshing itself. It wants to be ready for the match. It knew that it was about to go into competition. Because I'm going to click power net. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite literally a power net. It's using electricity. I'm smart. <laughs> True. <sighs> We're seeing more British support in the chat. I'm seeing British for everywhere. Look at in the match text, which you can see on the left, technically, uh, the spaces of just nothingness from Big Up Boris and Pug, uh, they're actually Boris Pogs in the <laughs> <laughs> the match text. Yes. A beautiful emote. Oh. <laughs> I. Oh. This is, I, I'm still trying to work out what the Aussies are going to pick now that Goat's been picked. Because yeah. I I was thinking if they picked anything, they're more likely to pick something like Goat. But now that's been stolen. <laughs> I mean, we did talk about the possibility of them wanting to pick Avalanche since it's a little bit more yeah. balanced with some of the tech elements. So we could see that. Um, I don't think we'll see I Can't Breed just because... If they're going to pick something to their advantage, I think they'd either want to try and go for the opportunity of a UK miss on an ACK map, or they're uh, going to go for Avalanche. I Yeah, but at the same time, I can also imagine the Aussie team picking something like I Can't Breathe, just because they like the song. Um, also a possibility, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can very much see that being a thing, <laughs> just them picking anything. Yeah, I, I forgot that uh, the Australia versus UK feeling in the air is of fun and having a good time. and so. Yeah, this is, um, if any of, well, any of the chat have ever seen any of the um, in-house tourneys just between UK tourneys and Aussie tourneys, uh, both are very well known for just being a massive thing, for just everyone having fun and messing about, uh, and everything basically being one big meme of a tawny. Uh, and then seeing them together <laughs> <laughs> results in things like this, where you can somewhat think uh, that they're picking something for a reason, but in reality they just picked it because it said goat in the title and they thought it was funny or something <laughs> like that. That's very, very possible. Haha, <laughs> 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 goat go burr. You never know. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, there we looks go. Looks like we're getting into it. All right. Uh, Progress has been made. The map is lined up. The players are possibly ready. I'm not fully sure. The Aussie streams have been adjusted to be the right way up. All is good. Impressive technology. All right, you guys are ready. Just right clicking and yep. clicking. Right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you. Horizontal. Good luck. <laughs> Wait, no, vertical. Oh my yep, god. I'm... Okay, wait. 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 <laughs> we got 90 degree oh. Aussies now. 90 degree Aussies. <laughs> Isn't that us? Because we're like somewhat in the middle. We're not like in the middle, but close enough. Okay, so it looks like... I haven't actually seen uh, Shinso or Chicken play before. Um, so I'm not actually fully sure how they're going to go, but I guess they're somewhat competent on tech stuff, given that they've just gone in for this, so. 
I ass I'm going to assume that the Aussies have a some form of plan here in who they've picked. Um, definitely, they're going to have their players optimized for whatever map they're playing, and seeing as those two players came in for this one specifically, I think they're more geared towards this map. Yeah, especially given that... Um, I think the, the good part here is that you have the option of switching out like plenty of people. Um, so all of the teams that have more players, like, um, or at least I know the UK does, I'm not fully sure about how many people went for the Aussie one, um, but Aussie has a fair amount of players from different things, so we will see. Yeah. Oh, that is just bouncing back and forth at the moment. Very close. Oh, average accuracy. Well, it's mostly because Rocker's holding a solid 97.9 to a 98, while <laughs> Australia is holding 96, 97. So it's like Rocker was just putting the team on his back for a little bit there, and then the Australians were keeping up with an overall score. So it looks like Rocker just really having kind of a little bit of an ack advantage over everyone else at this point. Uh, yeah, uh, to clarify that little bit of an ack advantage as well, um, Rock is actually legend in the 115 guild. <laughs> so, uh, his That's ack is nice. very much not to be underestimated. <laughs> oh, a miss from Chicken. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Shinso missed uh, previously, so that's gonna put their ack down yeah, a lot. Definitely a few percentages as the whole team of the UK is holding combo with really good strong 96 and a half to 96 I think it's the cursor I think the cursor is what's carrying the UK team right now this is going to check you we've got it perfectly placed oh <laughs> perfectly it's like a I don't know if you ever played like FPS games where people would put like duct tape on the center of their like TVs or monitors so they could oh, see yeah, where they were like get a shot well get a shot you draw a dot on it in the middle <laughs> Yeah, perfect. It's the same thing, but for Beat Saber. <laughs> he has that inside of his index at the moment. <laughs> it seems it's like, just... of all of the people on the Aussie team, even Marv at the moment, still holding his combo, and Zeros as well, but still it's just at a 95.2, whereas all of the Brit team Anywhere from like three people, or well, two people near a 96. Uh, Rocker and Gilo around the 95.7 area. Currently, the act is non comparable, really. And the yeah, point I difference mean, is ever so growing. I mean, you can even growing. see that in the fact that Rocker missed, I believe, twice. And <laughs> he's at 95.2. So, whereas Marvelous is still holding that full combo and he's sitting at 94.9 so Rucker's act is really just doing a number on the the Australian players as far as trying to maintain a higher act percentage what I think as well uh, I think that what we discussed before of Tiger not really showing people how good he is um, is very much coming into play here <laughs> yep Currently on top on that 96.17. Far and away the best act. 96.17 and actually one of the currently one of the lower ranks in uh, this match at very least. Yeah, definitely not to be underestimated though, and we're coming up to the end of the match and it looks like UK is gonna hold out about one and a half percentage ish over the Australian team on this map. Whoa. Yeah, because I already know that the, like, in the actual um, qualifiers, uh, as far as the passing teams, Australia did have the worst act with, I believe, a 94-something average. Um, and they were only the only team to actually have that 94 average. Uh, the Brits, on the other hand, all the way up at that 95, just slightly, right, I think, like, 0.2% or something, or 0.02%, something close like that, uh, right below Netherlands. So... This does not surprise me in that act difference. At no, all. of course not. Oh. None is looking to be the first map. The non act map going to the UK. Rocker <laughs> Well, I mean, you say it's a non act map, but I don't know. I see 96s on my screen. To me, that's act. 
Well, I mean, there's a, I think there's a certain point where people can act anything. Um, <laughs> Uh, we also have, I think it's mainly the fact that currently uh, Rocker and Gilo, who are current, like, better ack uh, in general than someone like Jack. Uh, Jack isn't generally the best ack, he's a fairly good tech player, fairly good speed player. Um, but ack is definitely not his strong suit compared to those three players. Um, but then again, Tiger is in it, so we could very well just consider this an ack map. Um. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you take a look at the overall team and all the players on the UK, you know, different players have different strong suits, and they seem to balance each other out really, really well, to where they come together as this really good cohesive unit, and not really like a few players holding up over the other players or anything like that. Yeah. So, I think this is one of the benefits that um, the countries like the UK, Canada, and the US have over a lot of the other countries as well. Um, uh, which is basically just that we have the choice in players as opposed to just having like a few top players or something like that. Uh, we have a choice of people around the top 100 area who are all like fairly, just fairly good, um, where you can mix and match effectively, uh, which is why I know that we had uh, tryouts for the Brit team as well. Um, and then people are, like, rated by Yoshi, uh, depending on certain things. Yoshi and Rocker went through and tried to form, I think, some form of a balanced team. <laughs> yeah, well, I think they did a fantastic job just looking at the outcome of that first match, so... While we were talking about, like, an overall ack advantage being held by Rocker, like, that was who he expected to hold out his advantage in that match, but it ended up being Tiger with the highest ack, and... We spoke about Tiger being a really good act player, but while he was at like a 96.17 or something like that, we also saw that Jack was holding a 96 just fine. So, Yeah, I think that was because it's more on the tacky side, and it's a slight bit faster than Tiger would prefer if he like, wanted to. Um, the good thing for Tiger as a player is that his best, um, like as far as act goes, um, he's best at any form of normal act. I would say second to that is Tech Ack, and then True Ack is probably where he he lies worse compared mm -hmm. to someone like Rocker. Um, because I, the thing is, when Rocker was trying to get good at Ack, uh, he saw how good Tiger was at Ack, and then proceeded to say, I'm going to get just practice accuracy until I'm better than Tiger. Uh, and then did that for, I think, like... I, I don't know how many months he did that, but he kept doing that until he basically reached uh, Legend in the 115. <laughs> yeah. Well, his training worked out for him, as we can see. But it looks like, just as we were predicting, the Australians have picked Avalanche for their map. So There we go. It's coming out. I think this is the one map where the Aussies definitely have some chance to try and fight back at the moment. Um... And if this does not go well for them, that is very much going to put the Aussies in a corner. Yeah, and it looks like over for the Australians, they subbed in Danny for Marvelous. And they put in Harp G, I think, instead of Gilo. Oh, they subbed in Matt as well, but I can't remember who the other player was. It seems like oh, Jack. He is now alive. Yeah, this is fairly on the sort of, well, mid-speed side anyway, so... I don't think uh, anyone really on the Brit team is going to have any trouble with it. I think they're just going for the people that seem to have either played the map or have at least a bit better accuracy on it. Um, but we will see. Now, one thing that I am wondering uh, is specifically... <laughs> Any of the, uh, well, wider streams, I don't know. Because um, like, there's some of the things in here, like a lot of the patterns are slightly different to uh, what, what some of these players are used to. Uh, because both Matthew and, um, well, both Matthew and Tiger are older players that have been number one GB and stuff like that in the past. They've been a fairly high rank in the past. 
have decayed a bit, so they're not used to a lot of the things in the current meta. Right, I mean, so I don't actually know if that's going to help them with a lot of these patterns, or if it's going to be somewhat of a hindrance. I'm really not sure. I mean, it's possible that maybe they're not as fresh on these kinds of patterns, but if you think about it, actually the older player you are, the bigger brain maps you've played, the better at reading you are. So think about that. Yeah, I think the reading's definitely something, in the, uh, at the very least, that transfers better. <laughs> yeah. Generally, the longer you play, you know, the more pattern recognition you develop, uh, depending on what maps you've practiced in the past and stuff like that, so... Yeah, it's... I think one of the main things that goes into it is the fact that there's not as much muscle memory as well. Um... And I believe they are now starting. Well, it looks like Shinsu had some misses there at the beginning, but Chicken is holding really strong ack right now, actually holding over a majority of the UK team. Oh, we had a miss from Danny there, though, kind of dropped his ack down to 92, bringing that average down a little bit. Yeah, I think this is actually one of the ones where... Because the Aussies can beat them, uh, the Brits can do exactly what we were discussing the Aussies plan was earlier, of just not missing, and then resulting in, well, something happening. <laughs> because even right now, someone like Tiger, where he just hasn't missed, um, looking at Rocker as well, completely fine. Well, Tiger has missed now, previously, Ooh. probably a little bit ago, so, but he's still holding that 95, so. Even with Matthew holding a full combo, he's at a 94.7. So even though Tiger has missed, he did uphold that 95% at kind of keeping that average up. And it looks like Danny's kind of having a hard time over on the Australian team keeping yeah. up with those tech patterns. He's had a lot of misses here and there with those, but doing his best to keep his act up. It seems that a lot of the Aussies are just having trouble with some of this, which is, this was their pick, was it not? It was. So this is backfiring uh, pretty massively as far as everything is going. Yeah, I mean, Chicken's still holding a strong full combo, but that 94 and a half isn't going to be able to seal the deal. Ooh, just one miss from everyone on the Brit team apart from Rocker, who full comboed. And that ma that act difference again, it's a 94.98 to a 93.3. Like, the score difference is massive, even just for, like, that 1%. 1% in this is just even more impactful than in a normal tournament. Well, definitely. And holding a average team act really is the difference between the other team... You know, it's hard in a group tournament for one player to overperform and to actually, you know, contribute to possibly pulling a win out. It really has to be all of the players playing cohesively and doing their best and upholding their combos and their accuracy to win the match. So, <laughs> as we came to the end of that, there, Tiger shaking his head. <laughs> this is this is one of the reasons you don't see players like him a lot. Um, he tends to not set a score unless he is extremely happy with it. Um, As a band mod. Which is, well, very interesting because his version of being happy with the score is having like a 96 on it. No, no, no. It can be yeah. a speed map and he will not care. <laughs> yeah, a lot of players that have been to that upper echelon of Beat Saber players, you know, within Score Saber or whatever kind of thing that you might grade yourself on once they've been to that high level they don't they don't take anything other than the best for themselves so you see a lot of like one miss oh restarting the map you know you see that from a lot of high level players i think that's something you see from a lot of low level players nowadays as well people will restart the map even if they can't actually full combo the map they'll just restart anyway <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do. To be to be a, at a high level or a mid-level in Beat Saber even now, I say mid-level as in, like, I don't know, top 400 to 200, you have to get really good scores. You pretty much have to full combo a lot of the low PP yeah. maps to get up there, so... It forms that habit in a lot of players. 
Matthew's cheating. Like, we will see. Really now, I'm, wor I'm trying to think of what they're going to pick next. Um, because um, currently the U.S. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, UK, yeah, along with this. Cool. It's literally just ACK maps. It's ACK maps left. Australia has to pick an ACK map for the UK to play. <laughs> that is... Oh. There's nothing about that that's going to feel good for them. Nothing at all. No, I'll give props to Chicken over on the Australia team. He kind of played out of his mind on Avalanche. You know, he did really well holding that full combo. Um, it's hard to maintain that level of play in a tournament setting. Um, there's not much you can do on ACK maps, though. That's a, It just comes all the way down to those numbers that pop up on your screen when you hit a block. If they're higher, can you hit in the you're going to win. Yay or nay. I think uh, one thing we are seeing in a lot of these early rounds, at the very least, is just that um, a lot of ones like this, where you have the countries that have ACK players, uh, it's just so decisive. Um, especially when you have that coverage of other maps as well. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be... I think it's a similar thing that's probably going to happen with Canada as well. Um, because they do have those like higher speed players, but they have so many act players. Oh, yeah, the the act, there's n really like I'm surprised because when I came into looking in this tournament and seeing all the teams come together and the players and stuff and knowing like, oh, these players are all act players, these players are tech players or challenge players or speed players, whatever. Well, you look at Canada and you think act. Canada is like <laughs> the act team. So, but also seeing. Teams like the UK come up, and the US and the Netherlands, they really have come close to maybe getting on that same tier of accuracy, but you have SFK. That's all you need. You know, uh, yeah. whenever... SFK actually had the highest average accuracy, I believe, of anyone in the qualifiers. Granted, you only played the lower maps, but still. It's... Oh, just the ACK in general on that team. I think it's... It's just ridiculous, even like moving into this match. Um, also something interesting I want to quickly point out is that they've actually, it seems that most of the ACK players have just been switched out of the Brit team. Um, so it seems that on this one, we're probably just going for combo. I'm not sure. Most likely. I think the Australians picking this map is more so a show of wanting to have a good last map rather than having to play an ACK map. Yeah, I think we haven't seen this map enough as far as everything's gone. Yeah, it's a good I'd, map. I really enjoyed this say... map. It's a jammer too, so <laughs> just, a, yeah. just a good time to play. In general, I'd say this is probably one of the, um, like, hit up on this cringe. I would say probably one of the best sounding songs, in my opinion, in the pool. Um, and then that, I think a lot of people can agree, just because it's so different to the other stuff. <laughs> you just get to go in and jam out for your match, and then see how it turns out. Yeah, it looks like we're getting some pre-jamming going on while we're waiting for synchronization as well, but coming into the song, I wonder how the Australians will actually play into these more balanced patterns while not being a slow map. It's definitely balanced in the sense of it's kind of up and down. It's not super angular. It's not anything really techy. So I'm wondering if maybe they can pull out a little bit more accuracy. Maybe, yeah, maybe maybe they can pull out a win. I I meant to be biased. Oh, I mean, I'm not meant to be biased. But I am biased. But you never know. Maybe they can get one win at the very least coming out of it. Um, the maps they planned for so far that looked like they could get a win from hasn't worked out. But maybe this will be it. The change in brick players as well. <clears throat> Bomb spirals. Maybe we'll just go and hit literally everything. Oh, there we go. As <laughs> that I say, it, Matt. Just follow the, the bombs. Bomb <laughs> Matt, Matt, <laughs> repping the Mackie's colors, hitting the bombs as well. Oh, he's doing great. <laughs> yeah, those bomb spirals for me is like an interesting concept in a lot of maps where. If you follow the bombs, the map is made that way so that you follow it in the sense that when you get done following through the bombs, 
your sabers are in the right place, right? Yeah. So if you if you try to cheese it and like stick your sabers in the middle, you're gonna be caught off guard. And a lot of players, when they get met with something like that, they maybe just overreact in the sense of, oh bombs, I gotta gotta get away from the bombs, and then you know they're not in the right place for the notes after. Yeah. Well, I think in a lot of situations, you can somewhat just put your sabers in the middle of the hitbox as well and just ignore yeah. the bombs, but right there, I'm pretty sure it was just kind of following the bombs and then just whacking it anyway. Um, oh, Shinsu having some difficulty on these pants yeah. there. We're up a to lot of these are... four misses now. Two yeah. on Chicken as well. One on Danny as well. Oh, it's not looking good. Yeah. It looks like those slider towers are really kind of giving them a hard time. You know, it's easy it's easy to underswing those towers thinking like, oh, if I flick my wrist here, I'm going to be able to get that last dot. But really, it's kind of hard to estimate how far you got to swing for a tower, especially when it's a slider. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that... Um... This chicken misses a few more here. It's one of those things that you can't just do a straight flick. You have to have the control to go with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think, in general, it's just... Oh, it seems that... Um, I don't know. It's just they don't really have the accuracy to go with it because a lot of accuracy is control. Um, so, like, as you start practicing ACMO, you end up getting better at sliders, etc. As you practice, just control maps like the old ppv1 maps you get better at things like sliders and stacks it's just one of those things that comes with it but oh it also now seems like they may somewhat be vibing on the aussie side <laughs> <laughs> looking yep. at moth swings here <laughs> they're just having a good time with it <laughs> some of his swings seems to be very lax in nature <laughs> oh and impressively, over on the uh, the UK team, oh, I was literally just about to say it, but Jack was holding a full combo and then he missed. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as accuracy goes, um, the Australian team being a little bit below that 93, getting back up a little bit now, but <laughs> UK holding almost 94 and a half. Oh, you know. the Twitch notification! Hell yeah! Oh, coming out with. They got Swifty or whoever that was that followed. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, and it seems again we're seeing that same. It's about the same difference every time I've seen Nokia. It's about 1.5-ish difference. Um, sometimes edging towards two, but yeah, I think for the. Accuracy. I think for these more balanced maps where it's more so just about. Holding, like you said, control over some of the sliders and being able to be confident following the rhythm and stuff like that, and just landing those slices right in the middle of the block. The UK kind of has an upper hand in general, so. Yeah, definitely. Now, going to the end of that, and that's going to be, what, 3 0 to the UK. And they just won without picking an ACK map. As in, like, the two main act maps. <laughs> you know, we, we start discussing, oh, what's going to be the UK strategy? And we're like, oh, no, they want to play act maps so that they can out act Australia. Because Australia didn't have that strong of act, but... They did it alone... anyway. They, just yeah. <laughs> went with the, they went with the stream and the tech maps, and they just out act Australia without having to play the act maps. <laughs> A show of force by the UK team. <laughs> they did not play to their own strategy at all they did not play to their own advantage they came in they did 25th november uh like default danced in real life tiger ate some nandos or something and then proceeded <laughs> to just wipe the floor with them <laughs> oh a good show from both teams but that difference just not being enough for australia to make it through yeah man it looks like the uk is going to move on to face france in their next match so We'll see how that goes. Yeah, but on the other side of that, Australia is going to be facing China down in the loser's bracket for their next match, so... Good luck to them on their next match. Okay. And with that crushing defeat, I don't know what... I don't really know what else to say. 
the UK destroying that and then putting that to an end. And I think for now that is going to be us taking our leave. 